Hallelujah. Now then, I want you to go to, no, you don't need to, 1 Chronicles 25, 1 through 3. It, the singers stop singing. He, he's coming at the right time. The singers stop singing. Well, let's turn there. 1 Chronicles 5, 1. What it is, all the singers stop singing and the instruments begin to play. The instruments begin to prophesy. These were the instruments. Okay, 1 Chronicles 25, verse 1. Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the son of Asaph and of Heman and of Jephthah, who should prophesy with harps. You got any harps in your church? I was sitting up there praying tonight. I said, dear Lord, send some musicians. I need some relief. I need somebody that can do that. Amen. Prophesy with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals. And the, now, I, I'm not making this up. Y'all better look, follow me in the Bible. This is in the Bible. I am not making this up. And with symbols and the number of the workmen according to their service was of the sons of Asaph, Zachar and Joseph and Nehiah, and Salah and the sons of Asaph under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Of Jethon, the sons of Jethon, Gedaliah and Zerah and Jeshalim, Hashabah, uh -huh, and Mahathiah, six under the hands of their fathers. <laughs> At least I tried. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who prophesied with a harp to give thanks. We got a harp? To praise and to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Come on, brother, prophesy something for us. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah! The singers stopped singing so the instruments could prophesy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. stringed instrument could prophesy. Every beat you beat on that drum, sister, when you beat that drum, you know what happens when these instruments play? The devils leave. The demons leave. That's why the devil hates praise and worship. He knows that we can drive him away. Remember David played the harp for King Saul? And as he began to play the harp, the evil spirits would leave Saul. You know, a few times he tried to pin David to the wall with his arrows. Hallelujah. But the, the power of the music, it ushers in the presence of God ushers in the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, brother, thank you. We'll let you prophesy a little bit more in a minute. Hallelujah. The king, uh, Jehoshaphat, uh, in Kings, and I, this the Lord gave me this scripture long ago when I first started singing. It's in 2 Kings, the third chapter, and it's the 15th verse. And, and Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And one of the evil kings, I think it was Ahab, was the king of Israel. And they were going to get, go against an army, a Moab, um, uh, I'm not sure which ones, the Moabites and some others were coming against them. But the scripture that I want to give us is that bring me a minstrel. Uh, so they get there and so they call for all of Ahab's prophets and they all prophesied. In fact, this was the, the, I believe this was the battle that Ahab got killed in. But they all prophesied, yeah, go! Oh, you, yeah, you're going to win. You go on over there. You'll defeat the enemy. That's what they said. 
And then one guy, he put, he made him some, some iron yokes and put them on them. And, you know, we, they, they're going to come under your yoke and they're going to be destroyed. And they were off. And, like, there were about 70 of them. And Jehoshaphat looks at all this kind of like a circus going on. He said, well, isn't there a prophet of the Lord here? <laughs> the king said, yes, there's one, but I don't like him. <laughs> he always prophesies bad things to me. So he said, well, no, don't be that way. Go get him. So they got him. They brought him down there. And so one of the, prophet, minor, one of the other prophets said, you better say the same thing we're saying. And he said, I told you I'd only say what God says to do. So he gets out there and they said, shall we go? So he agreed. He said, yeah, yeah, y'all go on. You, yeah, you go on. Of course, he didn't mean it. And uh, Ahab said, I told you to tell me what God says. He said, I saw all of Israel scattered yes. up on the mountains. Yes. But before he could prophesy, because of, because of the evil in the atmosphere, he said, bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played. See, he said, bring me a minstrel. After he finally got there, bring me a minstrel. In fact, I think I've got these stories mixed up, but it's good anyway. <laughs> You'll get the meaning of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, you can just, I'm transparent. You just can see through me. Hallelujah. Well, anyway, thank you. So the minstrel began to play, and it says when he did, see the evil atmosphere. So it changed it. When the minstrel began to play, it says, and it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he prophesied. Then he began to tell him the whole truth, what he saw. Hallelujah. And then in uh, 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 another scripture I want to take us to, 1 Samuel 10. I got a lot of scriptures, but we'll be through here in just a little while. 1 Samuel chapter 10. I want you to see what the anointing. See, the anointing came up on that prophet. You know, you can't, you can't prophesy, you can't minister until the anointing comes. You, you know, you can't preach, you can't pray. For the sick. I mean, you can in faith, but, you know, that's hard. It's much easier when the anointing comes. And then you can move in, move into it. Hallelujah. So he couldn't prophesy. He didn't have a word until, until the minstrel began to play. And then the hand of the Lord came up on him. Then he began to prophesy and tell him what to do. Okay? And this is what the anointing does. It's 1 Samuel 10, 5. Actually, it's about Saul, I believe. Hallelujah. 10, 5. And after that, thou shalt come to a hill of God. This is Samuel talking to him. Where is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabric and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. I tell you, when God's Spirit comes upon you and upon me, we are turned into another person. We are turned into another person. But did you get that nugget out of that chapter 5? That here the prophets came, and, they, and when they all got together, see, the anointing is caught. That's why I like these Friday night services. You know, we all get together, put our anointings together, and we're going to catch. We're going to get more aflame for God. Hallelujah. We're going to get more on fire because she provokes me, you provoke me, you, see, you provoke me, and we'll say, oh, I want some of that. I'm going to reach out for that. See, that's what we do in camp meeting services, in revival services. Hallelujah.